Jesse, when you were down in research, did you run into a Dr. Rhea Underhill? I didn't. Who is she? She was, is, a colleague of mine. A researcher studying a kind of extra-dimensional mold growing below research. Well, I don't like the sound of that. No one does. Look, I haven't heard from Rhea since the Hiss arrived. Would you mind having a look around for her next time you're in research? Of course. Thanks, Jesse. Now, what's on your mind? I visited the quarry. What's the plan for all that black rock? The Bureau has used black rock almost exclusively for containment purposes. The I say, branch out. Instead of boxes, helmets. Instead of blast shields, knives. Knives? Yes, knives! So many combat applications. Slicing, stabbing, gouging. Sorry. I've been trying to get Darling to explore combat applications for years. I got a little excited. Wow. I did not expect that from her. This place is looking good. Arish is making real progress around here. Right? This place is a fortress. And with him taking care of operations here, I can spend more time analyzing the Hiss. I've been attempting to isolate and neutralize the Hiss resonance in blood samples, but no luck so far. So you can't reverse it? Not yet, but perhaps reversing it is too simple. See, if Hiss resonance can rewrite human genetics, then perhaps it's a question of rewriting the Hiss resonance. In theory, that could pave the way for custom human genetic alteration. I wonder how often the phrase mad scientist is used around here. How is HRA production coming along? Better than expected. We've already made enough to get people out of a couple safe rooms. They're here, alive, thanks to you. We never would have lasted this long if you hadn't walked in those doors. You deserve thanks too, of course. We got this place up and running together, Emily. I should be going. Enjoy. I will. Lots to do. It's ridiculous. Pope's grasping at straws. Why? If hiss is a frequency, then why couldn't it vibrate molecules in order to alter human physiology? It would explain the hair loss. Think about it. The precision that would require is unthinkable. Sector Panopticon Altered Item Maximum Security Prison Dangerous Reminder, this week, any documents that suddenly appear pink, light red, or any shade in between must be incinerated immediately. Failure to do so will result in termination and possible bodily harm. Thank you for your attention.
August 4th, 1964, we discovered the oldest house while investigating a suspected altered world event case in the New York City subway tunnels. The agents found their way up into the building. Once we became aware of it, it was there. For the rest of the population, it was hiding in plain sight, a, a slippery blind spot, seemingly discouraging observation. It's a, a place of power, an ongoing AWE of its own, seemingly adhering to its physical outer constraints and yet constantly breaking the known boundaries of reality. It's, it's unstable, shifting. Note. For more details on control points and the research and process to stabilize and secure the core sectors, refer to a separate presentation. After extensive research and investigation, the Bureau made the building its headquarters on November 13th, 1968. The Federal Bureau of Control was never out in the open. This, this was always an obfuscated, classified top secret operation. So imagine our surprise when the building's observation-resistant aspects began in some unquantifiable way to affect the Bureau as a whole. Refer to a separate presentation. what the Bureau calls Dylan. His cell's been breached. Has the Hiss found him? Are you there with him? Can you protect him? Is there something I can help you with? I'm Jesse, the new director. I need to get inside. New director? Right, uh, well, okay, hello. I'm Frederick Langston, the Panopticon supervisor. It's not the best time for a tour. We have hiss everywhere, numerous cell breaches, and system failures across the board, but you're the director, so here we go. Founded by Zachariah Trench, the Panopticon is our state-of-the-art repository for all altered items... I don't have time for this. Power and I was told Dylan Faden was kept here. Can you help me find him? Faden? Uh, sure. Darling wanted him somewhere secure and isolated, away from people. He's in the maximum security cells, upper level. But there's currently a, uh, a pressing matter, ma'am. We've got an object of power loose in there. <laughs> It's wrecking the place. The Benikoff TV, it's a, it's a real doozy. Salvador took a team in to handle it, but no one's heard from them for hours. This is a Category 5 OOP we're talking about, and if we don't contain it soon, it will tear the Panopticon apart. And we don't want all those altered items getting loose, ma'am. No, trust me. Dylan's in there. Open the door, Langston. 
I'll handle it. If you say so. Uh, I usually tell first-timers not to touch anything, so, uh, just do that. Here, I'll get the door for you. And please, ma'am, call me Fred. Thanks, Langston. Numerous so Is the TV back in its- no rush or anything, it's just, you know, an ongoing concern. Do you like working at the FBC? Sure. I mean, yeah, the drama's a bit much, but I get better benefits here than I would over at the Postal Service. I checked. Better health care. That's not to say I don't like my job, ma'am. Been here over 15 years. No one knows the Panopticon collection better than me. I'm, uh, close to them, in a way. I can't tell if that's creepy or normal here. How do you keep the altered items under control? It depends on the item. Each one has different needs. Ritualistic touches go a long way. Singing to them. Did he say singing? Flipping the lights three times, that sort of thing. It's not superstition if it works. What's the difference between objects of power and altered items? Think of them like storms. Objects of power are like tropical cyclones or hurricanes for the uneducated. They're big, rare, and scary. Of course, directors can just bind the OOP and become the eye of the storm. Altered items are more like weird thunderstorms. Some may rain frogs, some may rain corn, but they all rain something. And how does the hiss factor into all that? It's changing them, making them aggressive. Now they're all raining, I don't know, knives, knife rain. Nice metaphor. Did you work closely with Trench? Oh, he spent most of his time with Darling and all them. The inner circle. Not that I care. Trench certainly had his favorites. He did stop in occasionally to scowl and smoke. Did you know the Bureau has a no-smoking policy? It does. Just not for Trench. Still, he is the one who put aside funding for the Panopticon. The man did have vision. How did you get this job? Started as a junior agent, because my uncle knew a guy. From there, I got put on a desk until an accident left the containment sector severely understaffed. At which point, I got bumped up to management. Put in a steady eight hours a day for another ten years, and voila! Supervisor. I just picked up a gun. Or a gun picked me. Like always. An octagon. Dylan's close. But that object of power might wreck this place before I find it. Something went wrong with the Bureau's plan to make Dylan the next director. Marshall made it sound like it was all Dylan's fault, but how much of it was what the Bureau did to him? I don't think she's telling me. object at all times, or it deviates. My super blades have never showed up. Can you help me? Damn. I can't. I'm sorry. There's an emergency. I'll come back. I promise. Okay. Okay. Just don't forget. I can't stare at this thing much longer. The object of power. I need to cleanse it.
Okay. The TV. Another object of power. with the TV. Now I can find Dylan. Dylan isn't here. He might be nearby. Or maybe the hiss got to him. I don't know. Jesse, listen. Dylan's here. With us. He just walked in. He says he is giving himself up. He's been affected by the hiss, but, but he is different than the others. We must isolate him. I'm on my way. We need to get back. I have to see my brother. Hey, what can I do? You're back. Oh, thank you, thank you. If, if I look away, I don't know what this thing will do. You have to get me out of here. The door can only be opened by the Panopticon supervisor. That's Langston, if he's still around. Langston. Yeah, I know him. I'll go ask him how to get you out. Please hurry. My eyes. They can't. They can't. Hey, calm down. Just focus. What's your name? Focus. Right. My, my, my name's Philip, and I think I can hold on for a bit. It's just my eyes. My eyes hurt so much. Just hang on, Philip. There's someone named Philip up in a cell. He's watching a refrigerator and very rapidly losing it. Philip? Oh shit, I forgot about fridge duty. He's been in there for over a day, I totally forgot. You forgot about him? There's a lot going on. The hiss, the Benikoff TV. Considering the number of things I'm juggling, ma'am, I think it's- Listen, it's fine. We just need to get him out of there. He said you'd be able to open the cell door. Yeah, I can unlock it on my terminal. There. Done. Door. Open. But Philip can't just leave. 
The fridge is behaving erratically. Ocular contact is the only thing that seems to placate it. If we don't have someone in there watching it 24-7, people will die. I'll figure something out. I'm pretty good with these things. Being pretty good with altered items isn't standard bureau procedure, ma'am. He doesn't know us very well. Like always. Hello? Jesse? I'm back. I'm coming in. Hey, Jesse? The fridge is doing something! seems fixed. Did fighting that thing off change something? Go. Where's Philip? Philip's gone. Something happened before I could get him out. <sighs> Poor Philip. He never did like fridge duty. But if you're here, then who's watching the fridge? The fridge is fine now. I took care of it. You don't just take care of altered items. What did you do? I touched it. I'm wound up in the astral plane. This thing was in there. It was huge, had one big eye. Wasn't friendly. We've been getting reports from the astronauts lately about something fitting that description. The astral plane is usually connected to our world through objects of power, not altered items. If this thing is linking itself to altered items, then it's clearly powerful. This may happen again. Do you think that thing is what got Philip? Must have been. The Panopticon is a dangerous place. The agents all know the risks. But, since you're some sort of altered item whisperer, I've got a list of others for you to corral. The hiss are causing containment breaches left, right, and center. Here, start with these. I'll see if there are any others missing while you're gone. My life just got a whole lot easier. I'll see you. Like always. Oh my god. 
Did she have to write everything in a made-up gibberish code? Fucking Marshall, their CIA spy shit. God. I found this token. Any idea what it does? Ah, that is a jukebox token. Little bastards turn up in the weirdest places. They're bad pennies. The Rangers use them to activate an old object of power. A jukebox, I assume. Does it have any good songs? Nope, just the one record. Hey, be careful turning it on, though. When it's playing, you get a free trip to the formation. The formation? That sounds ominous. Why does it send you there? The Bureau has been wondering that for years. I mean, it's just a pile of rocks built by God knows who, but... Well, researchers have confirmed it's in the same threshold as the quarry. Well, no one's ever been able to map a physical route to the formation for maintenance. So it's in the quarry? You just don't know where? Pretty much. We only send in annual expeditions to the formation now. Checkups, Salvador calls them. This year's team went in the day the Hiss arrived. Come to think of it, the song should have gone back hours ago. I can go in and take a look. I'd appreciate that. The jukebox is kept just past the security booth over there. Just put in the token and enjoy the ride. What's the deal with Blackrock? Oh, fuck. Don't get me started on Blackrock. You know, ever since research found out that it blocks paranatural stuff, they have just been parading dangerous materials in and out of the fucking quarry. Oh, fucking lab coats, man. I love making my job harder. Sounds like there's some tension between departments. Still, at least the quarry's got a good view of the night sky. You know, me and Salvador used to have afterwork beers down there. What do you know about Dr. Darling? Uh, about as much as anybody, I guess. Head of research, loves to hear himself talk. All of those science types absolutely do. Uh, now he's been acting a little bit psycho recently. Although HR told me not to use that word, so... Everyone thinks finding Darling will lead us to the answers. But if he's completely lost it, then what help could he be? You're security, right? Do you work with Rangers? Not often. Rangers are specially trained in threshold reconnaissance and ground zero AWE response. Security is more interested in the dangers inside the Bureau. They must see some weird stuff out there. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, every week they are tackling things that were previously unknown to the human experience. Most Rangers, they retired due to cognitive collapse. I looked up the medical definition. Not fun. How does the Bureau handle thresholds? Handle might be a bit of an optimistic way to put it. Um, Marshall sends the Rangers in to map them, check growth rates, locate epicenters, take samples, measure stuff, basically. Sounds like he's done his homework. Now, down in maintenance, thresholds are used just like any other tool. The lab coats mine black rock from one, maintenance siphons water from another. We use it for pretty much everything, except drinking. Why don't you drink it? Do I even want to know? Yeah, a lot of time we find these little chunks in it. It's uh, pretty gross. I didn't want to know. What do you think of Marshall? Marshall? Marshall's a fucking badass. Rangers could not ask for a better leader. She's a little, uh, you know, intense, but given the stuff she's seen, I'm not surprised. She does have a bad habit of disappearing, though. Where does she go? Uh, last time she vanished, I did some digging into the security logs. I found camera footage of her entering the quarry. She was down there alone for days. Now, typically that's not allowed, but Marshall is kind of above the rules. I wonder what she finds so interesting in the quarry. I have to go. You're not the only one who's busy, you know. I'll be seeing you. I don't think I ever told you this, but I was actually on the path to being a ranger once. Did the whole boot camp thing. Even got rookie status. Anyway, not the point. My old ranger squad was a great bunch. There was six plus me. Remus, Hazard, Cho, Guy, Hepton, Stall, and Thompson. They were supposed to get back from an expedition yesterday. We had beers and wings planned. Problem is, 
They weren't here when Darling handed out the HRAs. Then they had nothing protecting them from the hiss. You see, they prepped for the worst, but I think that we're already past that. We all wore these pouches around our neck, and I really don't want the hiss to get them. Could you find them for me? Uh, the squad would have come back through maintenance, but they probably spread out from there. I'll keep an eye out for them, Arish. And I won't let them stay his. I have to go. Me too. You're not the only. Go get some his. The resonance emitted from the HRAs is purely antithetical to every variant of the his signal I could arrange. But how did Darling create it? It's happening. After all these years, Dylan is here. Oh, but am I too late? How is he? I need to know. He's clearly been affected by the hiss, but it's different than any other manifestation we've recorded. Maybe what makes you so special is genetic. He was a prime candidate. Or maybe it's Polaris protecting him, something else affecting the situation. I need to run tests. He seems more in control, more present. I want to see him. My brother? Or is he? Of course. Now, Marshall set up an HRA warded cage to contain him. It's on the upper floor, up the stairs. Okay, I need to go. Jesse, be careful. HRA production. They're already getting other survivors. You know about this Arish guy? I heard some rangers saying he saved them in maintenance. They were attacked by a new kind of hiss, and Arish got them out. All right, but still, a security guard leading rangers? I don't know if I like taking orders from a mall cop. and then leaves? What's the deal? She must have her reasons. She's probably out doing some recon. Then she should have taken us with her. I need some action, goddammit!
distorts you. Happiness comes, white pearls, but yellow and red in the eye. Through a mirror, inverted his knee, right? Leave your inside by the door. Push the fingers through the surface into the way. You've always been in there. You walk as the control. We stand around you while you train. You can almost hear our words, but you forget. You are warm through time. The thunderstorm distorts you. Happiness comes. What? You are warm through time. Shit. The thunderstorm distorts you. That's Dylan. Can you hear me? Come on, on, Dylan. I'm here. I found you. You've always been in there. Do you know who I am? Oh, you know me. Say it. You are Dylan Faden's sister. He's talking in the third person. Always a good sign. Do you know who you are? Not Dylan. Trench and Darling made sure of that. I'm P6. P6. But I'm better now. The hiss made me better. Push the fingers through the surface into the wet. You've always been the new you. You want this to be true. Can you stop that? Please? (sighs) Not exactly the reunion I'd hoped for. It feels good to say those words. I want to say them. They sound good. They make me feel good. Don't you want to say them, too? No. Fuck off, no. You need to help me get this thing out of his head. If he is still in there, if there is anything left, you have to help me. You! You came in through the hole in you! We let you in, you've always been here! The only truth! A copy of a copy of a copy of a copy! Stop it! Orange peel! Shit! Shit! He can see you. This is not safe. We found Polaris together with my sister when we were very small, in ordinary. In the desert, through the door opened up by the slide projector. But she didn't help when Trunch took me away. She didn't give me any powers. All the powers are my own powers. (laughs) She didn't help when they locked me up for years. After the song time for applause, we build you till nothing remains. The air cracks and the truth will march out of you. You are home. The Bureau brought the slide projector back here with me. And the Bureau did what the Bureau does. They used it, and they found, they opened the door up to the hiss. That's the only thing I can thank them for. There, there it is. We stopped the altered world event in Ordinary when we shut down the slide projector. And now the projector's here. When your worm is a tune, you can't stop humming in a dream. Baby, 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 yeah. Just plastic, so safe, nothing to worry about. (laughs) Funny. I welcomed the hiss. I let it in to get rid of her. The hiss set me free. Polaris is using you. The Bureau is using you. You are a puppet. You can almost hear our words, but you forget. If we shut off the slide projector, maybe, maybe that will stop the hiss. Maybe it's not too late for my brother. You must see the truth for yourself, Jesse. Sister. The horrible truth about the Bureau. The hiss is the better option. Go to the prime candidate program in the containment sector. I have the key card to get you there. Salvador wanted me to have it. Wanted? Bullshit. I saw what the hiss did to Salvador. What it turned him into. Okay, Dylan. I'll go. I want to see the truth for myself. I'll go. But only to look for this light projector. 
You can help me. We can end this. You are a worm through time. You are a worm through time. I don't know what else I'm hoping to find here. Dylan. Can we talk? I'd like to tell you about a dream I had last night. Off to a good start. Okay. I'm listening. I was back in ordinary, before all of this happened. But in the dream, I was alone. It was just me. I was the only child. A girl. My name was Jesse Dylan Faden. But then the Bureau came and caught me, brought me back here, locked me up. Have you ever noticed that our names, Jesse, Dylan, they could be girls' names, boys' names, could be anything. Don't you find that weird? I find that weird. Sure. What the hell was that? Is he trying to mess with me? You are a worm through time. The thunderstorm distorts you. Happy. Maybe Dylan's still in there. Maybe there's a way to reach him. I'd like to talk to my brother, please. Dylan? Dylan would like to tell you about a dream he had just now. This again? I was going to be the new director of this place. I helped you get a job here, so that we could be together. You were an office assistant. You'd make coffee and deliver the mail, and there was always plenty of work to do. And it stayed that way, forever and ever. It was nice. Really nice. That's debatable. But here's the strange thing. The dream shifted, and none of it was real anymore. It was a game. We were in a game, and it was a fucking boring game. But you couldn't stop playing. And then it shifted again. Or, or maybe it was another dream already. Or maybe I'm just confusing them. But in this other dream, it was more like a musical. This is an ordinary song about an ordinary girl from an ordinary town. It's the ordinary story. She worked an ordinary job in an ordinary office. And something, 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 something. And that's all I can remember of that dream. Maybe that's for the best. You are a worm through time. The thunder's haunted. Maybe I can learn more about the hiss from him. Can we talk? I just had an interesting dream. Oh, shit. That's fascinating, but let's talk about the hiss for a change, yeah? This dream was about the hiss. Ugh. That's what I'm gonna get. In my dream, the hiss had broken free of this prison, this house. I'd set it free. And the president himself was there to welcome us. He was the first one to take the hiss in. Spread the word. At first, many people thought it was horrifying, that he was horrifying. But also, many people who heard his words wanted to welcome the hiss in. And slowly, more and more of them came around until the whole world was brought together by the hiss. It was wonderful. 
Okay. Thanks for sharing that. For the record, that will never happen. Not as long as I'm alive. The thunderstorm distorts you. Happiness. Maybe I'm just here to punish myself. Any new dreams you'd like to share, Dylan? I'm glad you asked, sister. This dream, like all dreams now, felt very real. Like reality. And reality now feels like a dream. Maybe it's all a dream. Maybe it's all real. Dream where my brother endlessly tells me about his dreams. I was in a dark place. And there was a dark man there. His name was Mr. Door. And he told me that there are many worlds side by side, on top of each other, some inside of others. In one world, there was a writer who wrote a story about a cop. In another world, the cop was real. Dor said he himself was in all of them at the same time, endlessly shifting between them. I asked him how I could reach these worlds. I wanted to bring the hiss there. But he didn't want to help me. He didn't like the idea. What did he know? I'm not wild about the idea myself. Through time, the thunderstorm distorts you. Here we go again. Once more with feeling. Let me guess. You want to tell me about your dream? Yes. Yes. In fact, I'm having a dream right now. Oh. That's new. In this dream, I'm standing in the corner watching Jesse and Dylan talk about this very dream. This very dream! He said just now! And repeated it again now! I'm standing there and watching and that's all I can do. It's as if I'm trapped there. And that's all I have to say about that dream. Okay, okay, Dylan. That's good. Is he still in there? Or is this the hiss playing mind games? I don't know. under quarantine. I wouldn't go in there without talking to Underhill first. Excuse me? You have? Are you lost? barge into people's private workspaces. She clearly doesn't know who she's talking to. Shouldn't you be in a safe room? Why? Because of those hiss things the rangers keep going on about. Haven't you people sorted that out yet? The situation down here could spell doom for the Bureau. You mean this mold? Correct. 
Perhaps you could help me. I require samples of various mould strains, and the mould has made the environment far too dangerous for me to fetch them myself. Really? Mould samples? I thought this could spell doom. It could, and it will, whoever you are. The mould is spreading. We need to find the source before it spreads too far. And these samples will do that? No. Samples of five unique strains, when blended properly, will allow you to travel deeper into the pit where I've pinpointed the approximate location of the source of the mould. Okay. So what do these samples look like? Similar to the one on my table there. I've made a list of the samples I need. Here. You'll find them throughout the threshold. I'll take a look. My name's Jesse, by the way. I'm sure it is. Have you worked with Emily Pope? Our paths have crossed. Darling arranged for us to have a coffee. A meeting of the minds, he called it. She's talented. I can certainly see her doing well here. I feel like there's a but coming. But she's drunk a bit too much of the Bureau's proverbial Kool-Aid. She shouldn't be afraid to forge ahead on her own. Science is skepticism. Everything must be questioned before the truth can emerge. So is Darling your boss? If you insist on clinging to such outdated hierarchies, then... yes. However, I would argue that our fields are too dissimilar for one to manage the other. Of course, Darling would much prefer to find his own miracle solution to the Bureau's fungal frustrations. He always needs to be the hero. So tell me again how you came to work at the Bureau? Well, like I said, I was brought in as a special advisor. A temporary position, you see. Although that's not the whole truth. I was employed here for a time, straight out of university. After a decade of admittedly fascinating work in threshold research and regulation, I began to chafe under the bureaucracy. I needed a change. Not that academia was so different. And then the mold happened? About four months ago, yes. Since my departure from the Bureau, they hadn't been able to find my equal in threshold analysis. Darling and I had kept in touch over the years, meeting at conferences and the like. He called me, and I booked a flight. I've never been able to say no to a man with a dangerous alien biosphere. <laughs> I had to leave my post in the middle of term, but so be it. So she's a professor. That explains a lot. The mold seems to be having some weird effects on things. Indeed. Even people are susceptible. The fungus grows rapidly within the chest cavity, killing the host. Luckily, one must ingest the stalks to become infected. Don't eat the mold. Okay. We've always cremated the infected bodies after autopsy, but I believe there may be another stage of maturity. A blooming, if you will. I never thought the word blooming would sound so horrible. Thanks for the information. Back to it then.
This looks like a good one. That's all five samples. I should get these back to Underhill. You look like a woman with mold for me. I found all five, but I kind of wanted to eat them. The mold has that effect on some people. Likely due to the fact it's not actually mold or even of this dimension. I suspect it is the result of two incompatible molecular structures, one dominant, coming into contact. I call it mold or fungus because it's closer in appearance and behaviour than anything else we know. Except perhaps bacteria. She reminds me of my old biology teacher. Did you happen to meet any more members of my ranger detail? I didn't see any rangers. Just walking mold people. Unless... Yes. If you found mold people, you found my rangers. I refer to the creatures as hosts. They, like other unwary agents, succumbed to the appetite. But that's nothing for you to worry about. The pill I'm about to make with these samples will make the lower level perfectly safe to traverse. It has the added benefit of immunizing you against the pit's toxic spores. I feel like I should ask to see your credentials. There. That didn't take too long, now did it? Ingest this pill, then go and find the source of the mold. Only there can we begin to understand how to stop it. Take a mystery pill because a rude lady in a hazmat suit tells you to. Great idea, Jesse. Ugh. Oh, honestly, did you want me to wrap it in cheese? Not the taste, the smell. It stinks in here now. Good. That means the pill is working. The worse it smells, the safer you'll be. Now go. Find the source. This must be the pit Underhill was talking about. Ramsey, Ranger Captain, known 7.25. Underhill sent us down this weird ass threshold looking for whatever's making all these vegetables sprout. I will say this, uh, it smells delicious. Ramsey, Ranger Captain, note 7.28. Uh, wait, uh, 6, 7. <laughs> Still in the fresh mold. I'll be straight up eating the vegetables now, because, well, why not? Mom said, eat your vegetables. Eat too many and your skin will turn green. Green like Ollie's. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Ollie, what'd you find now? Is that the source? It's kind of pretty. Nope. <laughs> no. I need to stop being surprised by all the weird shit in this place. You've returned, I see. 
And you're not sprouting mold from your eyes. I take it that means my pill worked. Now tell me everything. Did you find the source? You did, didn't you? I found a big, angry plant. Like, gigantic. I killed it. You killed it? You found the source and you killed it? I could have learned so much from a live specimen. Her concern is touching. Really, it's too much. Here, I brought you a sample. A piece of the innermost mold. You're not such a lost cause after all. Strange. So different, even superficially. Another stage of growth, perhaps. Please, no more stages. You'll be pleased to know that cutting down the creature at the source has already resulted in a notable cessation of the mold's rapid growth. You've bought me time for further study. So what now? I'm glad you asked. While you were busy in the pit, a number of mold hosts were sighted beyond the threshold. They managed to sneak out without the rangers noticing. There's a reason I didn't send Steve and Andy to find the mold source with the others. These vagrant hosts must be eradicated as soon as possible. The mold can still be spread by their overgrown bodies. Any idea where they went? The hosts I've observed are not a sprightly bunch. Here are the reports I've received. They'll help you find them. I'll go take care of them. Good. And do be quick about it. There's a nice way to say that. Thanks for the information. My pleasure. Back again, Director. things had gone differently in ordinary for us but wishing won't change things ordinary finding the projector so will coming together in this one case uh, a new object of power something we have not seen before i mean coming from me that's that's saying something and the boy dylan faden prime candidate six and the sister as well I mean, once we catch up with her but the, the boy so much potential. We're talking Northmore level readings here. And, and I don't want to invoke his name, but it's completely different circumstances here. It's remarkable. There was an incident. Yes. a valuable member of our team, yes. Excess of force. Dylan has so much. But he's... He's just a kid. Like, I'll take the blame. He, he, he needs some slack. I mean, boys will be boys. He's exceptional and under a lot of stress. Roberts got killed. It's an unfortunate accident, that's all. Marshall needs to realize this. We will make this work. We'll make this work.
I can see you're upset, Meg. Why don't you tell Uncle Mr. Bones what's wrong? I did bad on my clairvoyance test. You can't ace every test, Meg. You see, everyone has different brains. Some brains can talk to each other. We call this ESP. ESP? <laughs> Some brains can lift objects like a baseball. Talk about a fly ball, eh, Meg? <laughs> no interruptions! So who cares if you fail your clairvoyance test? Maybe your brain can throw baseballs, or talk to dead people, or make friends blind. Once we know what your brains can do, we'll know what job to give you. And if your brains are just right, you'll get to sit in the big chair. <laughs> What if I don't want the big chair? What if I don't want the big chair? Everyone wants the big chair, Meg! That's why we're all here. Use those brains to listen for once, or the only chair you'll get in is the one with straps. Is this what Dylan wanted me to see? It doesn't matter. We need to find that projector. All the times I felt paranoid, I was right. The Bureau could have given me the answers, but they just stood by and watched me. We used to play there all the time. Me and Dylan, and other kids as well. We loved it. This time, I remember was different. We found a way in, deeper into it, like it had shifted. We went inside and that's where we found the slide projector. A dump is a place for lost things, things that have been thrown away. Did you ever feel that way when you were growing up, Jesse? What? No. Yes, but that has nothing to do with- Was there a slide projector at your home when you were small? Mm. No. <laughs> Those were before your time, I suppose. But your family did look at photos together, maybe. In one form or the other? Maybe. Hmm. When was this? Can you remember? At parties? Barbecues? How did it make you feel? Did your parents ever show pictures that embarrassed you? Was alcohol ever involved at these parties? Did your parents drink? 
Did that make you uncomfortable? No. That's just stupid. Come on. That has nothing to do with this. Nothing. This light projector, let me ask you this. As a child, did you ever fantasize about worlds inside pictures? Inside a painting? You know, stepping into a painting, into a hidden world, escaping and finding adventure there? Away from your parents? I don't... I... I don't think so. I don't remember. Maybe. I don't know. Studied what happened in ordinary here. That's the place to start looking. I were both prime candidates. Experiments. going back home. Of course we are. It started there and it's never Something's blocking it. Gotta be a way to rotate these tracks. Maybe there's a control panel nearby.
You're listening to America Overnight, celebrating 59 years. Thanks for staying with us. Here's our first call. Hi. What I'm about to tell you, if they found out, I don't know what would happen. If who found out, brother? The men in the suits. They told me it was an industrial accident. But this is something else. Something nobody talks about. Ordinary. This certainly doesn't sound very ordinary, caller. No, not ordinary. Ordinary. It's a town. And it wasn't an industrial accident. I mean, that's what they said. But that's bullshit. Whoa, please watch the language, caller. It may be 2 a.m., but we're still a funny show. I, I'm sorry. It's just my brother lived there. They said the town was destroyed, but it wasn't. I went there. The people are gone, but the town's there. It's still there. So the population of an entire town disappears, yet the town remains. Tell me, was the phrase, there is no salvation, written anywhere? I'm... I'm not sure. The same thing happened in Brazil in 23, a village called Hor Verde. More than 600 people just up and left. The government said they were fleeing guerrilla forces, but we know the truth. A mass abduction, as predicted by my regular guest, Dr. Quincy Reagan. Abduction? You mean aliens? That's bullshit! I know they're lying! Now I warned you about the language, caller. I'm afraid we're gonna have to cut you off. Well, good timing, too. It's time for a short break. Hang in there, America Overnight. Curious correlation with the yet. Unknowable forces intruding upon our world in the form of altered world events. These forces gravitate toward archetypal objects a gun, a, a television, a supposedly haunted house. So. Clearly, humanity affects this process. Our collective unconscious is a, a map of sorts. We hold the key, but we don't know how to use it. We create these archetypes through everyday life, popular culture, urban legends, but we are observing and influencing a complicated system in action. We can change the likelihood of something being a receptacle for these forces just by thinking about it. But we haven't found a method to control the outcome. And yet, there's something unique in us, in our dreams, in the conceptual reality with power, with our minds. What's the cause and what's the effect? Are we the starting point or just a necessary evil in this? A byproduct, a reflection, a projection. We'll struggle to find the answers to these hard questions. Or do I try? Annual evaluation of Dylan Faden, formerly P6, performed by Dr. Carla Vaughn. The questions asked here correspond to the fifth iteration of the Gunner's Psychological Assessment. Are you ready, Dylan? Let's begin then. In a single word, describe the world around you. Where's Casper? Dr. Darling is out of the building today. He's never out. He didn't want to come through. He never visits, not since Robert. To tell Darling it wasn't my fault. I couldn't control it yet, but I can now. I learned. I... Will you tell him? In a single word, describe the world around you. A prison. A cold, empty prison. Not even a poster on the wall. Mm -hmm. What is the next number in the sequence 3, 6, 9, 12, 15? 18. What day is it today? How the hell would I know? It's not like you give me a calendar. You find a rabbit in the woods. 
It is breathing, but not moving. You cannot see any blood. What do you do? Leave it. Expand on that. It doesn't matter. The rabbit's not real. None of it's real. What day is it today? Do you enjoy asking people questions that can't be answered? Is, is this what gets you up in the morning? What you dreamed of doing as a scared, stupid little girl? Can you describe a dog to me? In Ordinary, we had a friend. Nosebleed Neil. And when it all went crazy, you know what I mean. Nosebleed Neil turned into a dog. Or something like a dog. What day is it tomorrow? Fuck off! I don't know! There is no calendar! How can I fucking know? Dylan, calm down. Fuck you! Fuck you and fuck Casper! Hey, hey! Uh, are you watching this, you old fuck? Did you send your bitch because you're too scared of me? Where is Casper? Security, get a team in here. I need... Keep it? You mentioned a poem last time we talked. By Thomas Zane? Yes. Beyond the shadow you settle for, there's a miracle illuminated. Hmm. I looked the poem up. Only I couldn't find any poet by that name. I did find a European filmmaker who moved here in the 60s, named Thomas Zane. What? I don't... No matter. It suits you very well. The poem. How you see things. Maybe you wrote it yourself. I didn't. No matter. You've said a few times that you feel like there's a piece of you missing. Can we talk about that? Okay. Yeah, um... It's this, I feel an emptiness, a yearning for something that I think I lost. It's natural for you to feel that way. Your brother and your parents are dead. No, no, Dylan's not dead. And that's not even it. You're referring to the imaginary friend from your childhood? Polaris. She's come back. After a long time, she's calling me. In a dream I saw, she... She showed me things. Jesse. It felt more real than anything. As real as what happened in Ordinary. The industrial accident in your hometown? That you believe was <laughs> No. It wasn't an accident. It was no industrial accident, and Polaris didn't cause it. She saved me and Dylan. Jesse. No! It was a cover-up. The government knows about it. There were agents there. Agents from... I don't know exactly. They took Dylan. They... I'll find them. I won't stop looking. Polaris wants me to go to New York. There's a building there. I have to leave soon. I have to be there at a very specific time. Something, something hugely important is going to happen. Jesse, you know we can't let you go until you're well. And that begins by understanding what's real and what's imagined. He moved the whole 
landfill here in the middle of New York, and nobody saw a thing. Pretty unbelievable. We should check that lab. Effective immediately. I'm setting up a new department. Dimensional research in the research sector. Uh, transferring the slide projector there. That's where my focus will be now. The ordinary site remains as is. We'll be back to... I don't know when. Darling took the projector to the research sector. He dedicated a whole area to it, so he knew it was important. Dimensional research. That's where we go next. Investigation sector, huh? We should check this out. Do you remember Mr. Tomasi, the head of communications? The hiss he was changed into showed up in containment, near the turntable. I'll take care of it. That thing's not getting away this time. I've heard reports about his particular use of language and intonation when repeating the his babbling. The biological and behavioral distinctions between different his corrupted individuals is truly fascinating. I wonder if I could categorize the data. And she's already off on her own thing. I've been seeing these darling presentations all over. Seems like he enjoys the limelight. So you noticed, huh? When he recruited me out of college, he actually came to visit. He interrupted my physics course by shouting, uh, not quite, professor, and then marching down to the front of the class where he proceeded to berate the very idea of laws of thermodynamics. He's been a showboat all his life. Darling visited you in college? Yeah, he read a paper I'd published, came to recruit me for the bureau. I accepted and then spent years waiting for access to the confidential research that Darling promised me. And whenever I ask about my access level, he just mumbles that it's temporarily postponed and then changes the subject to the effect of entropy on luck. I wonder who else Darling hit his work from. Marshall? Trench? Have you learned anything about Dylan's condition? Only that he's definitely his, but I guess his chanting made that pretty obvious. You know, interestingly, the words of the his incantation have an average length of four letters. The most common word used seven times is want. The next most common are through and time. That's very interesting, don't you think? I don't care about the words. What about my brother? Right. Sorry, I got a little off track. Well, strangely, his tissue samples all look healthy, unlike the other his I've tested. That's good news. Right? I wanted to talk to you about the crazy things I can do. My abilities. I get the sense that they're not very... usual around here. Well, usual and unusual aren't really benchmarks at the Bureau, but for some perspective, Director Northmore once used the floppy disk to send a bowling ball six yards through the air, and that was considered a huge deal. So compared to that, you are most certainly an outlier. An outlier. I like the sound of that. I should get going. Don't let me hold you up. Constantly changing labyrinth. They never pass. 
pass through. Dimensional research. Every measure of security. This boy left, said the son of Anniki Tähti. My assistant will keep work in the club and the house standing. Lomille lumps, holiday humps. How can anyone even get out of here while the building is sealed? Let alone go on a holiday. Holiday is holy. Artie? 
<laughs> Did you miss me? Did you have this in your sock? Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Park, don't make a wound. You did good. Take my cassette player. You can borrow it. The song is a present from my friends to you. It will get you through the maze so you can do your job. Did that really just happen? Of course it did. He gave me his cassette player. It'll get me through the maze, huh? The janitor always has the keys. Finding the projector was how this all began. What started in ordinary ends here. You, me, Dylan. We've all come full circle.
There was a doorway here. To where Dylan and I went, where the projector took us, where we met you. The arrow opened the same door here, but there's just an echo. Are you close? Just on the other side? Projector's not here. Moved again. What did Darling do with it? I've got to find out. The projected image from each slide is a a physical portal into another dimension. Only one slide remains. Dylan's sister burned the rest in ordinary before we could intercept. The text on it, color slide film, this side towards screen, and the number 36. The topography of slidescape 36 bears deep wave marks. On the slide and in the distance, there's a formation of five pillars, like crude, outstretched fingers. There were casualties on our first expedition. Communication is an issue. There is no sound there, as if you've gone deaf. And radios don't work. Correction, a resonance from an unknown source in part within the range of audible frequency. It acts in unpredictable ways, causing feedback loops that can tear you apart. Trench insists he heard something else. It made his ears bleed. Our equipment found no evidence of anything beyond the primary resonance. Trench's medical tests show nothing amiss. Expedition 3, we located the source of the resonance in Slidescape 36. It is an entity, a living organism of a considerable mass. I I've named it Hedron based on its physical shape. Hedron? We, we, we built a Was that for it. you? Did he bring you here? Is that why you brought me here? You're here. You're here. They have you. I know you. I remember from ordinary. I thought I'd never see you again. <laughs> Hang on, I'm coming.
I'm Dr. Casper Darling, and this, this is my final message. It's not the end. But after this, I won't, I won't. I exposed myself to Hedron Resonance fully. It, it is, it's changing me. I've, I've seen. I've been shown so much. Slide Skate 36 was where Hedron stopped the spread of another. It's, oh, it's terrifying. It really is. It's another source of resonance. Trench was exposed to this other. It will now spread. I've done everything I can to stop the Hedron Resonance amplifiers. I, I don't know if it'll make a difference. I, I, I won't be here when it happens. I, I should have told him any more. I'm being said one more lesson. Something wonderful, I think. comes down and there's nothing there. It's just the cell and death. I was wrong. There was never anything there. Hello? Polaris, are you there? Please. No, Candace! Please! 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 I just want to sleep. Now I let me sleep.
Federal Bureau of Control, how may I help you? I need those field reports typed up and in management's hands first thing the tomorrow. The Bureau's the best at what it does, protecting everyday Americans from farm threats. There's the new girl, standing around daydreaming when she should be getting work done. Who the hell does she think she is? The director? Why do they keep you around? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll do my best. Anything for the Bureau. Are you sure you are not lost? Maybe you can find yourself in the director's office. Oh, great. I was just waiting for my mail. Please, take the outgoing mail as well. I'm not me. I can't. Why can't I feel you? Oh, I've forgotten something. I can't think. Oh, I'm lost. Oh, where are you? I can't feel anything. I... I don't want to be alone here. Where am I? What is this? I want it end. Wake up, please. I want to go home. Pick it up. The director is crazy. So to keep trying. You are getting closer. We've been invaded. I need to go inside. I have to keep moving. I have a plan. An answer. I'll take this. 
I won't let them win. That's how it happened. The hiss got Trench first. He turned on the projector. He let them in. I have to remember the hiss. The hiss is the enemy. Burrowing in, I'm trapped in here. They're taking over. I will fight this. I will find a way to push them out. <laughs> Welcome back. I knew I chose a good assistant. <laughs> you are worth time. I need my gun. Ah, you are worth time. The thunder saw scorch you. I know what I must do. Yellow and red. Start at the beginning. I should have seen it earlier. This is my mess to clean up. My fight. No one else's. I am the director. Hello, this is Dr. Casper Darling. I have a classified message for the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. I have sad news. Hedron is gone now, but it was not a source. It was a catalyst. Do you understand? You must go to my office, the end game. It will be revealed. You, I can't. This is what Dylan wanted all along. But there is something. I can feel it, but I don't know what. The motel is a place of power, of change, a place to pass through, connecting everything. This is a dream inside my head. Why shouldn't it take me anywhere I want to go? <laughs> really?
grow brighter around one constant they revolve Hedron is dead but you're alive here in me maybe Hedron put you in our heads when we met her Maybe you were always there, and she was just trying to teach me how to trigger you. Maybe I'll never understand. Maybe I don't need to. Trench was the first to be corrupted by the hiss. Slowly, over the years. His need for control only made it worse. It was Trench who took the projector to the nostalgia department. He opened the door to the Hiss. Just like that. With Hedron dead, the Hiss tried to corrupt me too. But I'm stronger than them. We are stronger. They're waiting. They'll try to stop us. My sister had this dream. Bad dream. And the whole world was dreaming with her. Dylan? She convinced herself that she was awake. She's always been stubborn. I knew I had to end her dreams. I had to wake her up. I had to rip down. You all were through the time, but the other song distorts you. Happiness comes white clothes, but yellow and red. I know he's still there somewhere. Locked inside. I know, because that's how it was for me. Dylan's in a coma. I don't know if there's anything of him left in there. If he'll ever find his way back. The portal's been closed. But the hiss is still in the oldest house. And the lockdown can't be lifted as long as any trace of it remains. I'm working on a solution with my management team, but there is still a long road ahead. I'm the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. We're in this together. You... ...and I. Shawshank Redemption. That's the name of the movie. Not important, but that was it. Even if it was a dream, I feel Darling reached out to me through the hotline. I have a feeling he and Trench won't be the only callers from the beyond. Problem in the foundation. That was Ati's vacation spot. 
We need to check this out. I still don't quite believe it, but you always knew where we were headed. Yeah, I found a file on the old director. I heard you closed the Hiss portal, or uh, whatever it is we're calling it. Now if we could just flush out the stragglers. So, what's next for Simon and Reish? Well, first off, I'm banning all slide projectors. That's it. <laughs> Seriously, though? We need to review our protocols. Research should not be making decisions that endanger the entire Bureau, but fuck it, the entire fucking world, without some serious oversight. I think Pope would agree. Certain people in the Bureau have been working in the shadows for too long. And I'd like to make these HRAs part of the mandatory Bureau uniform. They're not stylish, but better safe than sorry. I don't think anyone will complain. Not after this. What are your thoughts on me serving as director? <laughs> well, I couldn't be more excited. I mean, look, don't get me wrong, Trench was fine, but... Well, you pulled us back from the brink, so... Well, I'm honored to serve, ma'am. I mean, fuck, shit. <laughs> Faden. Sorry. He'll get it one day. So, what's the situation in my bureau, Arish? The situation is we are still up to our eyes in his. Not to mention the months of repairs it's going to take just to get this place up and running again. But is it doable? Of course it is. You just might need to tell some rangers to grab a wrench, once they're done hunting his. Did anyone ever mention to you that Darling was using the slide projector? Well, Salvador never did, but um, I doubt he even knew. Look, I'm well aware that it's our job to study and contain the things that we don't understand, but... Some of the things that Darling did were way outside of our mission statement. Look, these things are not toys, and acting like they are is only ever going to end one way. At least Pope seems to understand that. Well, it's secure now. No one can reach it without my say-so. But thank Christ for that. Marshall's been missing for a while now. Any ideas where she could be? The last time I saw her was in maintenance when I was leading the Rangers out of the Atlas. Yeah, I told her it wasn't safe, but... She said she had to go check on something. Did you ask where she was going? Whew, Marshall is not the kind of person you question. <laughs> kind of intimidating, you know? But, uh, she was by herself. If that helps at all. Not really. But thanks. Hopefully she turns up. I'll see you later. Jesse, good to see you. We've got Dylan situated in his containment cell like you asked. I've got medical staff running tests as we speak, and I'd be happy to walk you through the details later. Other than that, what's next? With the slide projector turned off, the hiss are shut out, but we're stuck with the ones already here. We can't lift the lockdown until they're all eradicated. If any hiss ever got out, that would be the end of everything. Well, eliminating them all will take time. Look, I'll do what I can on my end, but my research is progressing slower than I'd like. I think I can help with that. I am making you the head of research, effective immediately. I want you to use everything the Bureau has, every resource, every confidential scrap of data, and find a way to keep the hiss out for good. That's... really? I mean, yes, yes, I can certainly... Yes! <laughs> yes, I accept. You'll do great. Besides, I didn't really have anyone else lined up. I'm honored, Jesse, really. Thank you. Uh, 
I've looked through the docs we found in Dimensional Research. That slide projector is extremely powerful. You were right to shut it down. How do you feel about me taking over as director? You act like it just happened. You've been director since we first met, remember? I am still thrilled. Nothing's changed, not for me. But the Bureau has changed. Trench and Darling are gone. Their knowledge, anything not written down, disappeared with them. They knew the Bureau better than anyone. They're the Bureau's past, Emily. We won't operate like they did. We'll learn from their mistakes. We'll be better than they ever were. We won't ever be like them. When the hiss got into my head, I saw some weird things. I think Darling even spoke to me. Does that make any sense to you? Well, empirically, no, but phantom voices as well as hallucinatory states are not uncommon here. And considering the forces that Dr. Darling was working with, he could have been transferred to a different plane of consciousness, physically or otherwise. And that doesn't upset you? Oh, very. And the fact that he hid those forces from me? It's infuriating. But Darling's dream was always to look beyond our reality. This time he may have taken a step too far, but as long as his consciousness can perceive his surroundings, I'm sure he's loving it. Maybe Darling was just trying to protect you from the darker side of his work. Fuck that. I'm not a child. Like, don't just assume I'm going to consider something morally repugnant. Which it all was. Which it all was, of course. How was Dylan? The same. I, I can't detect any his activity, but his physiology has certainly been altered by it. And I can't tell if his brain activity is genuine or simply the aftermath of the hiss, like spasms. Dylan could wake up tomorrow for all I know. I really can't say. Then I just have to wait for him. That's fair. He waited a long time for me. Don't worry. We'll be monitoring him around the clock. If he wakes up, we'll be ready. I don't mean that in a hostile way, just... Well, you know. I hear you. My brother isn't exactly popular around here. I hope one day he'll have the chance to change that. So, there was a moment after Hedron died that I couldn't feel my powers. The hiss got into my head. Just for a moment. So that explains the HRA outage. Before we knew what was happening, the hiss had us. They were in my head. I saw terrible things. I mean, I was about to go under forever when the hiss was pushed back. The HRAs had come back on. Dylan vanished afterwards, and we fought off the hiss that came after him. So if Hetron's death knocked out the HRAs, that means there must be a new local source for them to relay, which I'm guessing must be... Me. You. Hedron is dead, assuming that word even applies to a resonant-based life form. But whatever it awakened in you, the power you call Polaris, is still active. Or at least, that's what my instruments are telling me. I don't think we're ever gonna understand all of this. And I'm okay with that. I'm just glad you're here with me. That's good to know. Thanks, Emily. I found Dylan attacking the astral plane and the board. What was he hoping to accomplish? Huh. Since they arrived, his have been corrupting objects of power, which have an inherent link to the astral plane. Maybe their goal was to access the astral plane and the board itself. That still doesn't tell us why. His motives are a difficult thing to work out, but I have been digging through confidential files and noticed a strange gap in knowledge regarding the board. 
Looks like any data on them has either been deleted or was never gathered in the first place. Then maybe it's time someone looked into that. Maybe it is. Well, I'll see you soon, Director. You're listening to America Overnight, now in our 29th year, lifting the veil between fiction and reality. Thank you for staying up with us. I've been getting a lot of calls about this meteor in Sterling, Colorado. There were reports of a large spherical container that crash-landed in a field outside town. Some government people reportedly took it away. Now, we happen to broadcast from Colorado, and Sterling isn't far. I drove down myself to check it out with members of the America Overnight team. I don't need to tell you, it wasn't long before we found pieces of metal debris scattered in a field. Listeners, this is yet another instance of an unidentified flying object, or UFO, entering our airspace and crashing. That the government took away the evidence under cover of darkness only compounds the fact that these are more than likely visitors from beyond our planet, or dare I say, solar system. Head on over to our website to see pictures of the spacecraft pieces we uncovered. And while you're doing that, our sponsors would like your ear. America Overnight will be right back. How many his sightings in the Ocean View Motel? I took care of the Tomasi problem. Sorry, I forget he was a coworker. Don't apologize. That wasn't the real Tomasi. He died when the hiss got him. You're right. I just didn't want to be insensitive. Sentimentality is a weakness in situations like these, Jesse. That's Bureau 101. I don't think Emily's in danger of being called sentimental. Well, I've got a bureau to run. See you soon. Yes, ma'am, Director Faden. Please, Emily. Not even as a joke. <laughs>